previously on the Gitologist. All right, so that's that. Three for three now on the lawnmower front for the summer, so I'm happy about that. I'm one out of two on the washer front. Uh, this one still has an issue. This one was perfect. This one will be sold soon. And we are two for two on weed eaters, and we're one for one on leaf blowers. Okay, so here is washing machine number two. This is the GE washing machine that was brought to me by the same fella who brought me the two lawnmowers over there. Uh, this one appears to be running. Right now it is on a quick rinse cycle and it does indicate that it is rinsing. I've got it hooked up to only the cold water set to a large load. It was doing some weird funky stuff earlier. So it was giving me an error code down here, it's not doing it net. Yeah, it is too. Let's see. Hang on. Let's get the LED light. Okay, you should see that LED light right there. Now we're going to count the number of times that it flashes after it stops. If it's going to stop. Right now it's not stopping at all. Earlier it was giving me nine flashes, but that was when... I'm not sure if I was in the correct mode to be able to read error codes or not. I followed the instructions on the... Uh, on the uh, service manual, what's the, which they do provide you, which is really, really cool. This is a troubleshooting, uh, it's like a service manual sheet that they put in the back of the unit. They, they put uh, right down in there. So you have to open up this top part. And this is kind of funky to get open. Um, there are some clips to get the front off, that front right there which covers this front. There are two clips. There's one here, and there's another one here. You have to reach in with a screwdriver or something and push those up while you pull out on the panel. And the panel will come loose on uh, this side. And then you do the same thing over here. That allows you access to two screws up front uh, for this top panel. This top panel has to slide forward and come up for you to really get this panel. Well, that's not true. You can still get that panel off, but it's kind of hard to uh, trace all of the wiring and you can't get to some of the stuff. But so, I don't know, you may, you may not have to take these off at all, but uh, I did. This panel, there are some screws in the back. Uh, I think there's five. So there's one, two, three, four, five screws. So you take those off. This thing, uh, raises forward and it scoots to the side there are some tabs here some tabs here and they go down in these little slots and the whole thing scooches over to the side to secure itself in those slots so you have to push it to the right and then it comes up and off of there um, yeah it took me a minute to figure that out so hopefully that helps somebody but uh, this down here the power comes in, the power cable comes in the back. The whole reason I was going to take this off is I wasn't sure where the power was heading. Uh, so I wanted to troubleshoot from the power source. It's been good. And it's definitely pumping, at least it's uh, pumping water out and in. Right now it's on the spin. Okay, so this is the pump down here, it looks like. Uh, this is the motor that drives everything. There's a belt and there's a uh, flywheel right there with a belt that goes around that. Uh, or a drive wheel, I guess you're not a flywheel, it's a drive wheel. We got, uh, this is a sensor over here that senses the height of the water flow. And that little tube right there runs up to this switch. And on this particular example, uh, this switch has come loose. I'm gonna have to probably epoxy it in because uh, the little tabs that hold it in place are broken. And it was when I first got this, it started to open it up. This was loose and down inside of here. So I'm gonna have to do something to hold that in place. You know, super glue it or epoxy it into place. Um, I'm gonna run another cycle after this and I'll report back on how it's doing and see if it gives me any area error codes. 
but I'm actually kind of proud of GE that they give you this. They give you this uh, troubleshooting guide. And it really tells you a lot about it. It tells you about uh, how to remove it. The problem is it's on the inside, so you have to open it up to even get to it. So, but anyway, small complaint. Okay, yeah, somebody tried to remove the load size switch, that's this, wrongly, most likely, and that's why it's broken. But it tells you exactly how to remove that. It tells you how to remove the front panel. You know, but once again, this is on the inside of the machine, so it's kind of it's kind of hidden. And it really does have a lot of information here. It talks about how to get this into how to reinstall the motor, all kinds of stuff. Uh, to service the shaft assembly. It gives you full service information, really. Um, it also tells you how to get it into, uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. It tells you how to get it into field service mode right here. Uh, position the cycle selector knob at 9 o'clock. That is this knob. So you position it over here at 9 o'clock. Uh, then you depress the start button while rotating the cycle selector knob 180 degrees. So you press and hold this while you rotate this over to this side 180 degrees, right? And then that's supposed to put it into field service mode. Release the start button and all the LEDs will light. This position is zero. Uh, LED lot. The LED number is the position located from the left to the right. But anyway, there's uh, the information for that. It also gives you all the information down here for uh, for light codes for the flashes. So if it flashes like. Uh, one, one second on and then one second off, like that, or a half second on and a half second off. It tells you exactly what all of these flashes mean. One flash, replace the, you know, and it gives you the uh, action to take to remedy the situation. Earlier I was getting nine flashes and it was telling me to replace the motor because I had a brake resistor open. I'm not sure what the brake resistor is. Unless it is the big resistor that is in the top of that. Uh, so there is a uh, control panel on top of the motor that uh, it looks like it uh, is a power regulation. Also, so it sends the power to the various uh, parts of the machine. Uh, and it looks like, I think up here in the lid of that, there is a big resistor. And that might be what we're talking about. That it's open. I did have that off earlier, so maybe that's why it was giving me that code. But you'll read your codes from that flashing LED right there if you're having problems. And then you can just relate that flash to that uh, that right there. And it also, you know, it gives you, it's not a schematic per se, but it does have some, uh, it does at least have a wiring diagram. Actually, I'm, I'm quite impressed with GE that they even provide you with this. I'm going to give this a little bit to, to finish this cycle. And when it finishes, I'm going to put it on a wash cycle and just kind of let it do its thing. Okay, just real quickly before my phone dies, I wanted to get a quick clip of this thing uh, running. It is now running a wash cycle, uh, and it seems to be running it error-free now. Um, I don't know what I did to stop the errors from occurring, but this thing appears to be at least running perfectly now. Um, I had forgotten about the siphoning factor on these on the drain hose, and I, w I had this drain hose on the ground, and of course when you try to fill the tank and the drain hose is on the ground, it's just going to siphon everything right out on, you know, right out the exit. So uh, what you have to do is lift it up first if you're doing diagnosis like this out you know outside like i'm doing um you need to get something i've, I've just got a piece of uh uh 
zip tie right here that goes through. There's a clip that you can buy, I think that goes in here, or comes with the washer, I, I, probably comes with the washer. But there's a clip that should go in here, but I'm just using a zip tie to get it up above the level of the water fill. So, you know, any water that comes out is gonna come up to the level of the water fill inside the tank and go, go no further. So that's why it's not draining. It'll only drain when it gets pumped out now. So we'll be able to diagnose it completely. Hopefully, oh, we have a leak right here. So that's one concern we definitely need to address probably either a new hose or I will just um, patch that one of the two We'll see probably just a new hose But at least I'll know what to look out for on that uh, Been researching a lot about the error codes and the diagnostic mode of this thing um, And yeah, it pretty much covers all of that here there are there are more diagnostic codes I really didn't get into. These one, these ones over here that I talked about earlier, these are the diagnostic codes for that LED flash on the motor itself. Uh, there is another set of diagnostic codes that you can read uh, that will indicate up here on these five LEDs. And those are all explained here and on this chart right here. So if you're getting some kind of error code, that will probably let you know. I'm not sure what's up with that that honking sound. Is that the... Uh, Is it? Wait a minute. Okay, that was moving around. The agitator was moving around. The tub is pretty much is stationary. You can see the tub is just kind of moving a little bit, but it's stationary on this part of the cycle. But the agitator inside is moving. Um, I'm not sure what that squeaky sound is it might have something to do with the fact that you know i don't have the front panel on here and so things are kind of a little bit squeakier than normal possibly or it could be you know a belt slipping i don't know it's not it's not that bad though it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me because this would be downstairs in my house it might bother someone else though so you might want to hunt that down the source of it and it sounds it sounds to me like the source of it is i think it's the motion of this tub in relation to the outside case I'm not sure or the tub mount rather but anyway, that's where we are with this right now. I've, I've got some um, detergent in there for this cycle because I wanted to kind of clean things out. So we'll let this run its course and we'll see if it drains and spins and everything properly. And I'll come back later and see what it does. And we might try to run another cycle, something random, and see if it works. Uh, this fill switch does appear to be working. I need to make note of the level we're at right here. So you see the separation in the the little holes in the sidewall there uh, for the super it is up above that lat uh, it's a it's above it's in between those so we'll come back later and then we'll try a different level maybe uh, large or medium and that way we'll it'll hopefully be a little bit lower and distinctively but right now it's indicating properly everything seems to be going smooth so you know fingers crossed right now this is looking like a fine washer with the exception of uh, that leak which is basically just pouring out okay so it's another day and my testing on this particular 
GE washing machine last night led me to uh, conclude that the uh, control board, which is the main board that sits behind the main switch on this model, is likely faulty because uh, this machine, I mean, I, I went to, uh, and watched a movie. I put this thing on. I went and watched a movie. The movie was probably about two hours long. Came back out and this thing was on the high spin cycle. Uh, and it was just spinning and spinning and spinning and it wouldn't stop. So um, usually when you look up problems like this and you look for resolutions, uh, they suggest that it's a timer issue. Like the the timer is faulty and therefore you know it won't advance to the next stage or whatever this is controlled by microchips though this doesn't have a traditional timer in the unit like some older units might have or even maybe some budget units I don't they might still be making them with mechanical timers um, where you you know you 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 probably remember them back in the day they would kind of click like key like sound like an egg timer like and then you would push it in uh, or pull it out or whatever and it would start the machine well, this is, doesn't behave like that. This is all controlled uh, with microchips. So, you know, I pulled the board out and I looked at it to see if there were any burn traces or, you know, any obviously faulty components, the things you normally do. And other than just a little bit of cor what looked like, not corrosion, but a little bit of breakdown on the coating that they had put placed on the boards, they actually coat the boards with a really thick um, kind of almost rubbery coating that I haven't I don't think I've seen on uh, any other electronic devices other outside of appliances um, I think they do that on washers particularly because you know of all the, uh, the possibility for corrosion being around caustic um, you know you've got bleaches and things like that you have to deal with in water it's gonna be in pro proximity to that and you can see like the effects of it just on the like right here for instance you can see the effects and this probably isn't a terribly old machine, but you could see just, you know, that much exposure uh, to, uh, you know, bleaches and uh, probably some soaps and whatever, you know, and water constantly, of course, um, causes that sort of thing to happen. And, you know, on a, on a electrical board, it probably is even worse. But anyway, I pulled that board out. I found one on eBay for like 16 bucks or 17 bucks went ahead and ordered it so we'll see uh, what this one does when that board comes in so for now this one is on hold but we're gonna turn our attention back to this one this one right here um, this was the one. okay so the new motherboard came in for this GE washer and uh, here it is here's the new one and here is the old one. I do notice one difference. Uh, other than that, it pretty much looks the same. Put this one, the old one over here. I'll show you what the difference is. You see the um, this little jumper right here. It has two wires on the jumper pad. Uh, this one only has one wire. This is probably for a model that has maybe perhaps another feature uh, that this jumper wire is unlocking. And it also could be that maybe this one needed that an extra jumper wire to fix it but we're gonna try this one first as it is and then if that doesn't work we're gonna change this little jumper to make it match uh, we've got some bent pins here too which is not a huge deal but that happened in shipping I'm sure So to make sure that that when that goes on there it goes on straight and let's try this the rational way
Okay. Uh, I did kind of kind of glance over the board to make sure that the, there didn't appear to be anything obviously blown or burnt, uh, anything like that. I don't see any bad solder joints uh, or lifting traces or anything like that that I could tell right off the bat. So um, we'll go ahead and plug these back in. This is the one we got to be careful with right here. All right, and this one. And then that was just an empty ground. But was it supposed to be empty? That's the thing. What, what, was, what could that have plugged onto? Because I don't see anything. I think it might just be a floater. Maybe for diagnostic purposes. That one right there. All right, we want to go for a, probably a small load size for right now until we figure out what's up with it. Okay, we'll leave the... What does all this shit mean? Look at the temperature. Look at the temperatures. Hot, cold, warm, cold. Colors, cold. Cool, cold. Cold, cold. Tap, cold, cold. <laughs> Tap, cold, cold. <laughs> Stupid! I don't get that at all. <laughs> okay, that's pretty stupid. Somebody was on acid when they came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> but you see this right here how i mean you only granted you only have to really hook these up one time but it's kind of look at that you know it doesn't really inspire much confidence and also this is the one with the leak on the drain so we're gonna have to Make sure it doesn't splatter all over anything that I care about. Okay. All right, here's the old board. We'll probably we're probably going to end up needing that jumper. I'm I'm halfway confident we're probably going to have to replace that. And I'm half tempted to, I probably should just go ahead and do it cuz I don't know why you would want the two jumpers on there unless it was a different model. So, yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and just do it cuz I'm sure it will need to be done. Right, well, this is, see, these are in a completely different spot. Look at the difference between those two jumpers right there. So, we're jumping from here over to a completely different spot. So, yeah, it's just, it's got to be for a different model, surely. Surely. Why else would that be, be there? All else on the board is the same, so... That would make sense. And if this doesn't work for whatever reason, we will we will change out the jumper. But hopefully, fingers crossed, um, this doesn't get stuck on spin like it did last time. We'll go ahead and plug it in and see. All right. Okay. Let's put it on. Uh, let's put it on a light load. Uh, okay, we got small capacity, light load, cold, cool, cold. <laughs> I have no clue what that even means. Once again, uh, we're gonna go options off on this. Uh, we don't want any extra spins. We just want it to go through the cycles as quickly as possible. And 
and something something doesn't seem right something doesn't seem right all right do I have to hold I think I might have to hold this one for the full three seconds we'll see Yes. I know there's there's a pizza cooking in there, sweetheart. Yeah, there's pizza cooking in there. What? Okay, I'm a bit You did. Cool. All right, I'll come look in a little bit, okay? Well, we've got absolutely nothing. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and pop the other one in. We'll put it back to the original way it was when I got this board. And I don't know, maybe this is a different generation of the board and they moved some stuff. It's kind of hard to tell, but what do we got here? Yes, sweetheart. Yeah, let's unplug it and plug it back in. Maybe, I don't know. Hang on, Ivy Sue, sweetheart. What, what do you got? Show me what you got. This is the money. So let me get it a little closer, please. Does it look just like the old one? Oh my goodness, it looks cool. He's a bunny. It looks, it's a baby bunny. I like him. And does it just look like the old one? Does it just look like the old one? It has that little mm -hmm. ear bend. Yep. Stuff. It has blue eyes and a little pink. Little, yeah. Little yeah, he's cool. Give me a minute, sweetheart, okay? Okay, we've got all, well, all the lights were on there for a second at least. All right, now it looks like it's trying to do something. It's trying to fill. Oh, it can't fill because, hang on, pause. Can't fill because there's no water in the hose. I can't do that. I knew I was forgetting something. It kind of makes me wonder whether there's a sensor that uh, if that sent the water has to be uh, present in order for that to kick on. I don't know. And if so, we might end up trying that that other jumper again, but let's see. Okay. We're filling up. Let's see how it goes. So far, so good. Uh, here's the other thing too, um, and this might have something to do with the cold, hot, hot, cold, hot, cold, color, cold <laughs> selector, but um, this valve on the hot side is opening when it should just be all cold. I mean, I selected what I thought was all cold, um, but this is leaking, so I don't know. I'm not sure how that's supposed to, I mean, of course, if you had a... If you had another hose on there, it wouldn't be a big deal, but it just looks to me like one of the valves may be slightly leaky in a way that it's not supposed to be. Not that it's a big deal, like I said, in this setup. Uh, when it drains, too, we're going to have, you know, the problem of this, uh, this hole. There's a hole right here in the drain line. All right. You see it right there? We'll have to definitely patch that up. Um, I will probably 
probably patch that with some silicone just for now and then just if somebody buys this off of me I'll just tell them that it needs a new drain hose okay she's filling up okay sweetheart thank you Okay, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to let this go through its cycles. We'll see how far it gets. We'll see if it gets to the spin and uh, gets to the end of the cycle, which would be great. If it does, we're done. If not, uh, go back to the drawing board. All right, guys, I really hate to end a video like this, but unfortunately, this board did not work either, and I ended up having to return this uh, to the eBay seller that sold it to me. Uh, with a note that said it was basically doing something very similar to the first board. It was getting stuck in a cycle. I can't even remember which cycle at this point. It's been a little while since I created this uh, video and was working on this machine. Uh, you know, I had too many other things really going on and didn't have time to continue with this machine, especially after having to order a board and return it once again. Just kind of lost interest and, and frankly lost time. So I had to move on to other projects. I will probably strip this machine of parts and uh, just keep the parts for something in the future that may be a little bit more salvageable. Something with a little less uh, scumminess on the inside. I don't have to clean up perhaps. So... That'll do it for this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed at least what I could present here and maybe some of you uh, got ideas for what you can do to fix your machine if it malfunctions in a similar way. I know it was the control board. I think if I'd have gotten a good control board, I could have gotten this thing to work. But uh, as is, I've got a bunch of parts and uh, I've got a big, uh, big old machine to set by the curb now. <laughs> so that'll do it. Thanks for watching. And for now, y'all take care.